right now on Secrets of Louisville Chefs, a restaurant unlike any other in town. And the restaurant's wonderful. It's true farm-to-table dining. I just love it. It's fantastic. Hear the story of how a farmer turned into one of Louisville's most successful restaurateurs. It's a different animal. And a chef who's turning local ingredients into just about anything you want. We are not afraid to try any culture. We're going behind the scenes at Harvest, where Chef Kobe Ming is revealing her secrets. We're gonna do one of my personal favorites. The secrets to making southern fried chicken livers. Very simple. Pork, four ways on one plate. It's delicious, it's very good. And dessert made with one of my favorite local ingredients. When in doubt, bourbon. Come with us behind the scenes at Harvest, right now on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Hi everybody and welcome to New Lou and East Market Street. I'm Kevin Harned. You know this area is really becoming a hot spot as of late and it's at the core of Louisville's growing reputation as a foodie city. Some of the best restaurants in town are down here. Decca, Rye, the Mayan Cafe, Toast, and the list goes on. And perhaps at the top of that list, this place, Harvest. I think it's spectacular. The restaurant's wonderful. I just love it. You could say Harvest is built on the backs of local farmers. In fact, it's owned by one, Ivor Joukowsky. I uh, am uh, out on the farm probably for eight months out of the year uh, and in the restaurant for four. And he's not the only farmer you'll see here. You know, some people say uh, to make heroes of uh, farmers. Pictures of those who supply the restaurant with everything from local meats, dairy and produce are showcased throughout the restaurant. We highlight them, we want people to get to know them, we want to tell their stories. Each picture corresponds to a giant map on the back wall of Harvest Dining Room. There you can see where the farms are located and read more about what they are producing for the restaurant. It's most of what you'll eat here. We mean to do 80% of what we do from within 100 miles. Local stuff. Love the uh, local produce. The farmers are the stars at Harvest and so is the chef. What we're trying to do, and hopefully it comes off that way, that it is not reinventing the wheel. Kobe Ming takes careful pride in bringing out the best of whatever ingredients local farmers bring to her. Ingredients that we know where they've come from and hopefully are coming very close. We're really fortunate to have a really talented chef and kitchen staff as a whole who really appreciate and respect local ingredients. Chef Kobe has been feeding Louisville for a couple of decades now. I've been around for a little bit, yes. And she's been doing it at some familiar places. Way back she was at Dietrich's, Chariot's, 211 Clover Lane, La Relais, and Lynn's Paradise Cafe, as well as... I was at Wilshire Pantry catering and uh, also helped open up Wilshire Market right down the street. It was at Wiltshire that Kobe met Ivor, as he would bring her fresh produce from his farm right to Wiltshire's back door. Now, years later, they're partners and friends. A very good friendship, a very close friendship. And together, they're serving some of Louisville's favorite food including one item that they just can't take off the harvest menu. Our buttermilk fried chicken livers. I love chicken livers and they're, they're very good. <clears throat> the chicken livers are wonderful. Some people love them, some people hate them. Uh, I honestly feel like we have converted, converted a few that uh, don't really care for them. The chicken livers, like most things at harvest, come from right down the road. A local farmer, Adam Barr, one of our favorites, he raises some phenomenal chickens. I've got these in a buttermilk marinade. We add uh, salt, pepper, and some of our uh, house-made roasted garlic oil. Also in there, a barbecue spice blend, which they make right here at Harvest. We get in fresh chilies that we dehydrate and then turn into a powder, garlic powder, onion powder, things like that. So we make our own special blend. So these have been marinating. And then we've got our seasoned flour. Again, you could just do straight flour, it would be fine. Uh, we add another little layer of ump, uh, salt and pepper, and then a, some more of that barbecue spice. That's a good secret for anything you're making. 
season as you go. We tend to season every little thing along the way. If every little thing tastes delicious and then you combine it, it's going to taste even more delicious. So then we come in and you can see how we've cut them all to be about the same size and gently lay them in here. So you want to be very gentle as you toss. So you just kind of come in, gently shake them off. So then you end up with evenly coated little livers. Next, it's off to the fryer. At 350 degrees, there's a secret here too. I would definitely recommend kind of doing them in small batches. You want to let your temperature come back up in between frying. Because if you load that fryer up, it fries that first round pretty good. That next round, if you have a candy thermometer or a fry thermometer, check your temperature before you drop that next round. Because if your grease is cold, you will have soggy, greasy food. If your grease is hot, you will have golden brown, crispy food. So those look pretty good to me. As soon as it comes out of the fryer, right then and there, it's still shiny uh, and vulnerable. You want to give it just a little bit of salt and pepper. Give it a little toss. Part of what makes this dish such a favorite is the mustard glaze that comes with it. And Chef Kobe is revealing her secrets to making it at home. It's a very simple process. So we're just going to add our whole grain mustard, add our Dijon mustard. We've got our roasted garlic puree. She makes the puree by slow cooking garlic that's submerged in olive oil. It makes a great roasted garlic and a flavorful oil, which turns out to be the key in this recipe, as you'll see coming up. So we're going to go in with some of our red wine vinegar. So we've got some phenomenal hosey honey, another local farmer, some sorghum. Sorghum, uh, we're huge fans of sorghum around here. It's Kentucky's version of molasses. And then another spice blend that's made right here at Harvest. So that's our togarashi. It's not overly spicy. It does have a little sesame, a little citrus. And we're just going to do a little pinch of some of our smoked black pepper. And you're just looking to kind of get everything evenly combined. And then we can slowly add that oil. And because you have so many thick things, you can kind of go in there pretty quickly with that oil. And there you go, it's all done. It's delicious, it's sweet. Mustardy, tangy, a little spicy, but not overly spicy. The mustard glaze begins the plate presentation. Kind of give it a base to build your livers on. So we'll go down in here with our little base of our livers. She also uses the mustard glaze as a dressing for fresh greens, along with crispy pieces of house-cured bacon. So these are snow pea sprouts. Uh, we get these from uh, Grateful Greens, uh, they're a hydroponic farmer, Clarksville, Indiana. They grow greens year round. Um, so these are just the tips that you would get. If they were allowed to continue to grow, they would be turned into peas. And for the final topper. It's a scallion parsley oil. So we blanch uh, parsley and scallions, blend them with oil. Then we end up with this real pretty green oil, just to give a nice little garnish. So that's our finished chicken liver right there. It's crunchy on the outside and smooth on the inside. The nice thing is, is not only the texture, but they're very light. It's not a heavy crust. The chicken livers are wonderful. They're so fresh tasting and I love the salad on top. This is great. This is very tasty. Still ahead, secrets to using local ingredients to create international flavors. We are not afraid to try any culture. If you like pork, you're going to love this. A little pork loin doesn't hurt. Plus, dessert made with my favorite local ingredient. When in doubt, bourbon. It's all still ahead as we take you behind the scenes with Chef Kobe Ming at Harvest on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Hey everybody and welcome back to Secrets of Louisville Chefs. I'm Kevin Harned, where we're dining out this time at Harvest in Nulu, where 80% of everything you eat and drink comes from within 100 miles of home. I really like the idea of 
everything being locally produced. I like the fact, being a fellow Hoosier, that there's a lot of um, Hoosier suppliers as well. It's a true farm-to-table restaurant that's actually owned by a local farmer. So 17 years uh, growing vegetables on my own, which, uh, you know, it seems like yesterday. Ivor Chakowsky and his business partner, Pat Cool came up with the concept for harvest while serving omelets at the Bardstown Road Farmer's Market. We'd have, you know, a line of folks waiting for 30 or 45 minutes. Uh, but from that, we thought that we could do something more, something different. And uh, I think we, you know, pulled it off. They pulled it off all right, but it wasn't without a lot of planning and perhaps a little good luck. As uh, Kathy Carey told me when she uh, found out when I told her that we were opening a restaurant, uh, she said, well, you're going to need to, you're going to need to be lucky. Uh, I, I think we, we all feel pretty, pretty fortunate and uh, hope to share those good fortunes with uh, all the folks that we're working with. The folks he's referring to are the local farmers who supply harvest with most of what is served here. Another key to the operation is Chef Kobe Ming. She honors what comes from local farmers and uh, tries to bring those flavors out. Source 80% of what we serve, uh, drinks 80% of those items sourced from, from within 100 miles. You know, I think all of our customers sort of, you know, get to know flavors that they might not have ever really tasted before because, you know, of the freshness of the ingredients and uh, what Kobe's able to what she's able to do with that. So there are some things, you know, olive oil and chocolate and citrus that unfortunately this area just doesn't do well at. But we do phenomenal at other things and so we really try to highlight those. You know, our tomatoes, our dairy has really dramatically improved the proteins, the, the pork and the beef, uh, and even goat and lamb. So our ultimate goal is to be extremely respectful to that product to the farmer, to the land, um, to support our local community. Chef Kobe came to Kentucky via Texas. But I call Kentucky, Louisville specifically, I call it home. Well, I've been here going on 22 years. And although she's a Louisville girl now, she's still influenced by what her mom and grandmother cooked growing up down south. My mother was especially interested and passionate about trying new, um, exciting recipes. That that passion is carried over to Kobe, and although she uses local ingredients almost exclusively, her flavors reach far beyond the Ville. Today we're going to do some things that are kind of inspired from El Salvador. It's a smoked pork loin that kind of has a El Salvador touch to it. And it has a distinct taste of Kentucky, too, in the form of what the chef calls spare rib jam. This is a perfect balance of salty and sweet. This is great. This is very tasty. This is excellent. It's a wonderful mixture of sweet and savory together. This is a favorite at harvest, but you can make it at home when you learn the secrets from Chef Kobe Ming. We've already brined and smoked just barely our pork loin. It is still very raw, very simply. We're going to sear this. Just a very simple seasoning of that roasted garlic oil, salt and pepper. You just kind of want to give it each side, you want to season each side. I've got some cast iron pans back here, so you can hear, definitely warm, but not overly hot. Just about anything you cook, it's about temperature control. So you can see some action going on there. You know it's hot, you know it's searing. You want to take a peek, see how he's doing, looking pretty good. We're just going to give it a little bit of a sear on that side. After another minute, Chef Kobe moves the pork to a 450 degree oven to finish it off. And now, the El Salvador style pupusa. I'll show you how to make some pupusas. The pupusa, which uh, I had learned about maybe eight or seven years ago and immediately fell in love with. It's a very simple masa cake that has a filling. We've got uh, a little dough ball of masa flour, so it's just the masa with warm water, garlic oil, salt, pepper. So it, it gets to kind of a, a Play-Doh similar consistency. You can add flavorings to this as well. We've done sweet potato, we've done black bean puree. It's, it's very easy to work with, uh, very forgiving. 
So what you're looking to do is kind of almost form a cup, a bowl, because we want this filling in the middle and we want to be able to have a layer of crust on both sides. The filling is that spare rib jam, which takes days to make. We got in a, a really good deal on some spare ribs. Rub it with a sugar salt spice mixture. The next day you submerge it in pork fat and then you slowly, slowly cook it until it's extremely tender. From there, it's smoked and then mixed with slow cooked onions, honey, and vinegar. So it's basically meat that is just bound just enough with something. It's not overly saucy, it's not overly sweet. So then we can kind of come in here with your filling. And again, this can be cheese, this can be chicken. It's a really good way to uh, kind of use leftovers and just gently seal that guy up. And then you just kind of press him back down. So you've got a filling right in the middle. From here, the pupusa goes into a hot cast iron pan. Quick, quick sear. Very easy. Very, very easy. And it's always smart to put a little bit of oil down just so that won't stick on you. And I'm gonna pop him in the oven. The sauce for this dish changes with the seasons, but even in the winter, you'll still get a taste of spring. We had frozen, and we also had pickled strawberries. So we thought, let's do a pickled strawberry jalapeno sauce to give you that tart kind of fruitiness. We pickled jalapenos, we pickled strawberries, kind of cooked them down together, and then pureed, and then you end up with a very simple sauce. The sauce begins the plate presentation. And then we've got our pupusa down. And then the pork. Just give it a little slice in half. Just kind of makes it a little bit easier to eat. And that gives you your base to kind of start this. This is our spicy slaw, just to kind of help brighten things up just a little bit. We do pickled beets, pickled butternut, pickled cabbage, pickled carrots. Um, we also do a very spicy vinegar that we'll add just a little bit of that. So this is another pork component, house-made chicharrones. Otherwise known as pork rinds just to give you, you know, something crunchy. Add to that queso fresco, a Mexican style cheese that they make right here from local milk. We get in some phenomenal dairy from JD Country Milk. And then a bundle of baby pea sprouts crowns the masterpiece. They are delicious as well as beautiful. And that's it, homegrown ingredients with flavors from half a world away. The pork is wonderful. It's fantastic. It's just delicious. Great food that's even better because you know that it's all local all the time. Super local all the time, all year round, doesn't matter what the season is. During springtime and summer when things are just flying in that back door, it's, it's a lot easier. We're tucking things away that we'll be able to survive uh, January, February, March most specifically uh, canned tomatoes, pickled vegetables, uh, dried fruit, frozen fruit, things that you can use right then and there, but you can also kind of save and use and bring back, you know, what a strawberry tasted like in June, uh, in February. We'll see how they do that coming up next when Chef Kobe reveals the secrets to her bourbon berry bread pudding. Stay with us for more Secrets of Louisville Chefs from Harvest right after this. It's farm to table this time on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett at Harvest on East Market Street, right in the area that they call Nulu. At this restaurant, 80% of everything you eat and drink comes from within a 100 mile radius. That's one of the secrets to what makes everything taste so good here. But the same stuff is available to anyone. You just need to know where to look. I think just about every day during the prime season you can go to a, a farmer's market. So there are outlets to get the exact ingredients that we get. Chef Kobe Ming's other secret is simplicity. Do things very simply and easily. and Hopefully that's what we do as well here. The food is simple and familiar. Recognizable, approachable, but also fun. This is really good food that I can eat. It's great, really good. 
Harvest chicken livers have been a favorite since the restaurant opened. It's the same story with this. Harvest bourbon berry bread pudding. Yeah, very, very good. Been on the menu since day one. The local ingredients of note here are bourbon, of course, and local berries, which Harvest uses year-round. We'll get in the fruit, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, whatever they are, when they're absolutely perfect. Uh, we'll do a super quick freeze on them, and then we'll bag them up, and then we'll stack them up and save them. As for the bread, it's leftover brioche, mainly the scraps from Harvest French Toast, which is a big hit during weekend brunch. So we end up with lots of end cuts, scrap cuts. You should never purchase bread to make this. Maybe if you're having a party and it's special, it's okay. But uh, bread pudding is the perfect way to kind of use up these tidbits. So we'll take our cream, which we get phenomenal cream, uh, JD Country Milk. They're just across the river, New Albany. Add to that local eggs. We get these from a few farmers. Uh, Adam Barr is one of our main farmers for eggs. Uh, and then we've also got, we make a, a really phenomenal, very simple caramel sauce. Uh, you could purchase this if you didn't want to bother, but it is very simple to make. So then there's some of that berry, where we basically cook down blueberries, strawberries. So you're just going to kind of mix your wet. So once you've got it looking pretty together, we can add our coriander, which we've toasted, uh, white pepper, same thing on that. Uh, bourbon vanilla. So we'll get in whole vanilla beans. We'll split them. We'll tuck them down into a, uh, for this particular one we use Old Forester. It really absorbs the flavor. You can see the little flecks in there. The secret to infusing your bourbon with vanilla, by the way, store the bottle in a cool, dark place for about three months. So we're going to go in with a pinch of salt here. Again, just to kind of round those flavors out. Another little secret. So then you're just gonna go on with these guys. And I've got my berries in my freezer over there, so I'm gonna go grab those, because we wanted them to kind of keep their frozen integrity. So we can kind of just go in, get them all in there. And these we've gotten from uh, blueberries of Davies County, which are phenomenal blackberries we've gotten from uh, Another local farmer, Bridget Cooper, over in Ramsey, Indiana. And these strawberries, you can kind of break them up a little bit. The secret is to let this mixture soak in the fridge overnight. Let it sit, let it hang out overnight. It'll look a lot different the next day. This is what it looks like after it's soaking. It, we like to give everybody kind of their own little, own little portion. We'll pop it in the oven, and it takes about five minutes. So we don't bake ahead. We bake to order. And you're really looking just for that, that custard part, the egg, the cream, for that to set. Now I've got one ready here. So we do a basic whipped cream, but we add that bourbon vanilla that we talked about earlier. As a topper, Chef Kobe has taken some of her caramel sauce and infused it with the juice from those berries she used earlier. So this is your berry caramel, your bourbon vanilla whipped cream, cool and creamy with the whipped cream. I don't know what else you could need. Yeah. <laughs> the only other thing I need with that is a spoon or a fork. Bourbon berry bread pudding. Wow, what a treat. And what a show here at Harvest. We hope you've enjoyed it. Many thanks to Pat Ivor and Chef Kobe Ming for having us and sharing their secrets. If you're looking for those recipes, you can find them on our website. It's newlocaltv.com. There, you'll not only find the recipes, but a complete restaurant guide from across our great city. Until next time, I'm Kevin Harnett on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. We'll see you later. Secret is... Secrets. Secrets. I'll give you one more secret. Secrets. Very, very good. It's another good secret.